morning. Welcome to another day on FV Grizzly Bear. Got Kevin and Cohen with us today. And we're just fishing local again. Wind's supposed to come up before noon, so we wanted to be in a position to make it in quick when once it comes. So we're keep it short and quick. We're uh, actually targeting gopher cod right now. Not something we normally do, but wanted to start off trying to put some gopher cod in the boat. I've got a lot of shallow quota left, so if we can fill up some of that quota with gopher cod, that'd be great. Stay tuned and let you know how the fishing's going. Well, it's been a couple minutes and I finally enticed one to join the crowd, so but he's a nice one. Well, I just picked myself up a blue. After I had a gopher cod, we'll see. Oh, yeah. We got the ground fish. You're welcome to the party. So once again, gopher cod have to be 10 inches. We did want to talk about location today. I don't know if you're at all interested in real estate. You probably heard the term. There's three key factors in real estate, location, location, location. Same thing applies for fishing. You can't catch fish where there's no fish, <laughs> right Kevin? It's pretty hard to catch fish in the desert. So you gotta be in the right place at the right time too, I might add, and this one's short. So what I wanna talk about today is location. Each different type of rockfish that we target really kind of inhabited a slightly different type of bottom terrain. Gopher cod, they like to bury themselves in a rock and uh, that's a nice one. They like to bury themselves in a rock and kind of sit there waiting for something to drift by. And so when you're targeting gopher cod like we're doing today, I'm looking for a rock that has a lot of vertical sides to it, someplace where they can hide and kind of ambush their food as it comes by. When we're fishing for species like browns, they're kind of, they'll find themselves over smooth faced rock, stuff that's not very tall, shale more like shale. Yeah. yeah. And then the, they'll oftentimes be out in the mud too. They'll drift off the rock and then pretty soon you're, you'll see a school of uh, browns on the meter. Browns are also a school fish. So that's another difference between brown and a gopher cod. Uh, the browns will school up and you can see those on the meter you're not going to see gopher cod on the meter because they're buried they're just they're buried butt first they're in the rock right waiting for something to come by same with tree fish i think too so yeah so location is everything so when i'm setting up my drift i'm looking at my chart plotter i have a furuno tzt3 with a seymour shaded relief map on it. so super important a shaded relief map is like a game changer the shaded relief map gives you just that a shaded relief picture of what's on the bottom and so when i'm targeting rock cod or ground fish like gopher cod i'm looking for steeper faced rock and you can see that on the shader relief map and then when i'm looking for browns i'm setting up on the edge of rock not very tall rock and i will look to drift off into the mud and right now i'm metering some browns on the bottom so that's another thing on the fish finder side, I am constantly looking at it to see what kind of life is at the bottom. If I look at a blank screen and there's nothing there, uh, I know that the fishing's not going to be too good. So I'm always looking for something in the water. It'll show up with like little blue specks, sometimes fade to yellow on mine. Blue means like low density. So it could be things like squid or things like pyrosome. So I'm looking for that. I'm looking for some type of life in the water. This one will go. I thought that's what it was. <laughs> so we uh, ventured off into sand and I was pretty confident that we were going to get a halibut. That was uh, that was my first cast. I actually switched to some two bait got bit and I knew, knew it was short. I knew what it was. It was just small. So we're going to keep drifting out here and see if we can catch a bigger one. I had to make a little move. It was getting a little windy up there. So I came down here to see if we can't catch some brown. And the weather conditions are a lot nicer here, at least for the moment. Look at that. Nice brown. Uh, a few more browns. We're actually targeting browns here. Colin just got a brown. Can't say it enough. One of the best techniques that I've discovered is I'll cast out and let it put in a rod holder and let it sink. And I'll get busy doing something. And then when I go to pick it up, put it in gear. As soon as I start winding, something will nail it. Usually it's a brown. Kevin's a firm believer that the browns sit there and we'll look at it until it waiting for it to move. And as soon as you move it, they're on it. In this case, we'll go for time. My little tricks work pretty consistently. <laughs> I hit on the ground, get distracted by something with my ADHD. <laughs> when I pick it up, I'm on. Oh, look at that, a copper. This is a copper rockfish. Copper rockfish, we're only allowed to retain 75 pounds every two months. So I have to keep a count of what we keep. Well, as Kevin just eloquently put it, things are changing and the wind is upon us. I feel it on the back of my neck. So we'll see how much longer we can do this. 
Dude, this thing's barely hooked. I'm glad that blue got off, man. He was starting to shake. I thought he was gonna wiggle right off there. So it's gotten a little slow there for a drift or two. And it's because the wind keeps changing direction and it keeps changing our drift angle. And we end up not drifting up over an edge. Like I said earlier, I like to, when I'm fishing, especially gopher cod, I like to fish, there's another one. I like to fish on an edge. Browns, I like to fish on the edge, but I'll fish on the muddy side or the, the soft side. So wherever, whichever way I'm drifting, whichever angle I'm drifting at, I try to find an edge that I can parallel. And so the last couple of drifts, I haven't been able to quite figure out exactly which way I'm going to drift because of the weather uh, but this drift I kind of got us back onto an edge and we're getting them about every cast now. Kevin's on again. Cohen looks like he's on and it's brown. So again I can't preach it enough. Location, location, location. Find those edges not just over the top of a rock but find the edges of the rock where there's some topography change, underwater topography change. In uh, my next video I'm probably going to go over how I take care of these fish. Kind of an art. Well, take them. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Big old red. Oh, still grinding away. The weather's still holding. It actually it seems like it's getting better. I'm keeping up with that theme of location, location, location. Think about when you're fishing and you drop down and you don't get a bite, you know, seven or eight switches of your of your lure. Pick up your lure and cast it into a different location. Because if one's not there, you can keep fishing that little spot all you want. But if there's no fish there, you're, it's an exercise in futility. There's one thing I could teach you guys today. It's location, location, location. And there's Cohen over there, silently whacking them back there without even telling them. Another brown. Another thing I want to bring up as far as location, fishing those edges. Don't hesitate to pick up and reset. Sometimes if you're off 20 feet, that can make all the difference in the world. I often get accused of setting up the drift so, to benefit my side of the boat. <laughs> and the guys that are on the other side of the boat are uh, not catching them and Kevin and I catch them. <laughs> So I, it, it's literally, it could be that much. 10 feet, you know, the width of the boat can make the difference between catching fish and not. That edge is, that edge is the key right there. So and I got another one here. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> Kevin likes to catch breakfast burritos. That's what I'm calling sea cucumbers now. <laughs> hey dude, watch where you're shooting that thing. No breakfast burritos for me. I like it when it turns into a, every cast is a fish deal. So the last four fish have all been on this slug up. They're brown. That I might want to add when you're fishing and trying to stay in a particular location I'm talking about vertically now at times when you're drifting along you're gonna to have to free spool your reel and let out some more line and let it get contact let that lure get in contact with the bottom and if you're not if you're not picking up things off the bottom you're not in the right zone Kevin's caught three sea cucumbers today no rock no two worms but three three cucumbers today which tells me that Kevin's fishing in the right zone Nice thing. So we left at six, we got back in at noon or so, and we ended up with 133 pounds of rockfish. So all in all, not a bad day, we made some money, can't complain. The weather did come up a little bit, it got a little windy, so we decided to just come in early, and that was anticipated. We actually got to fish a couple hours later than what I thought it would be, so 
not going to complain there. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button. If you are interested in commercial fishing, please subscribe because we'll continue to put out videos as long as you guys are interested. And thanks for watching, and that's a wrap.